Hey everyone, welcome back to City Skylines and the Aurelia City. So we made the new industrial area last time. It was on the edge of the city, right next to the public transport hub, the new one. I already have some ideas for the rest of this place, how to expand it, what else to add, but I want to leave that for now and return into the downtown. So today we will revisit a place from episode one. That's right, the super interchange episode, because the city grew mostly in one direction away from it and uh, the interchange itself never received any finishing touches on one of its sides. So that's what we are going to fix today. And also we will work on some expansion here. We will rework some of the infrastructure, trains, roads, and build a waterfront plaza with some museums, galleries and stuff. So let's go. And we are also going to start building a third canal. So back when we did the second one, not so long ago with that uh, shopping mall and the, you know, the residential uh, spires buildings, uh, you can actually see that in some of these shots. It's kind of close by. Uh, I mentioned back then that we are going to build a third one and this place is perfect for it because there is this uh, bay in the river and it was always kind of clear how this place needs to be used. There needs to be some kind of a project related to the water. So either some kind of a dock or marina or the mouth of the canal. So that's exactly what I chose. Now this canal is probably going to be the longest because it's, uh, well, it is going to be going to the river, you know, further apart from the upper lake basically and it's definitely going to have more tiers as we progress forward but uh, this uh, first level is probably going to be uh, the longest in the entire city. Now when I was doing this uh, I was doing this on the live stream and I wasn't exactly all that sure about geometry because we also have the highway here we also have the railway and uh, some of these main streets and also these trams as you can see uh, I am kind of exposing the tunnel right there so we will be forced to basically rework all of this and kind of think about how we are going to end the city in the, in this part of the map because all of this infrastructure obviously is going to kind of aim towards the end of the city, not really the trams, but the highways and trains definitely will. And we have to think about what I, what am I going to do with them uh, later, right? So I decided that uh, we are just going to make that, uh, that highway a bit, uh, a bit straight. And uh, in some future episodes, I am going to do extensive changes to the landscaping. I would like to add some sort of a ridge, like a mountain ridge, and the highway is going to go inside of it into a tunnel. And it's basically going to be like a hard obstacle, uh, just uh, marking the edge of the city, right? So this super interchange at the end of the day is not really going to be in like a geometrical center of the city. It's definitely going to be the downtown, the, you know, the most high density place in the city, the highest density place. But it's definitely not going to be like uh, directly in the center. I think I kind of got carried away when I was uh, building the rest of the city, but I just can't really afford doing the same volume on uh, the opposite side, opposite direction away from this place, right? Uh, because of the limits as well. Now, we are also, like I said, going to do some finishing touches on this super interchange. So, first of all, I had to change this uh, railway. At first, it was, uh, I think I did this in like episode 2 or 3, when I was building the train station probably, or, or maybe even episode 1, I'm not really sure. But this railway was not really aiming anywhere in particular, it was just going right on the waterfront over that little beach area on the bay. And it was kind of taking a lot of space because, you know, why just have that railway go there because there's no real reason for that. Uh, it's just going to take up space, you know, there could be some more interesting projects in that particular area and it's not all that uh, just necessary to have it have uh, some sort of infrastructure like that in there. So I decided that we are going to move the railway slightly further away from the river, but there is a bit of a problem because the railway needs to just uh, cut through all the highways because the highways are built on like four levels or something. It's impossible to go directly above or beneath it. It has to go through it, it kind of needs to wind through the levels somehow. So there was a little opening that uh, kind of presented itself, even even in relation to the uh, uh, surface uh, geometry of some roads and something, because I had also built long time ago this uh, like a sunken shopping area, like very deep 
positioned uh, shopping area with some kind of pedestrian paths just leading from it. And you could have seen in some of these previous shots that there is like a, like a pedestrian path that uh, already created like uh, like a, like even a vertical path, let's say, because there are no buildings on top of it, of course, uh, that can be used on a different level for the railway. So that's what I used and it's going to look really nice because it's going to be going directly between all the buildings and if I'm ever going to decide to do a first person ride on that particular rail new railway that we are building here uh, it's going to look really really good how it's just going to be enclosed with all the buildings on each side because it's just going to give you that very high density feel right so anyway this is a very old footage I these days I already have the the mod that gets rid of the shadows I'm going to link it in the video description because People asked a lot about it in the previous videos, but I already have it, so you don't need to don't need to type that in. But uh, I just didn't have it uh, when I was building this. Okay, now this surface road again, not really aiming anywhere, just like the highway previously. But at this point, I was already thinking that it's just going to serve as a general, like important avenue for this area. It's not really going to lead anywhere in particular. It's probably just going to uh, go around the waterfront to just have some bigger road on the waterfront, really, to just match it with uh, some, some, kind of, some interesting architecture or whatever. It's not really that super critical, though. Uh, it's going over this uh, canal. It's not really lead leaving a lot of space. Obviously, this canal is not intended uh, for any kind of uh, boat traffic. It's just decoration really nothing more just uh, something interesting just a just a different color right on the entire just part of the city now we are going to do this uh, waterfront plaza so we have this highway that goes uh, kind of closely to the to the water here and it might have been possible to just build some kind of some kind of skyscrapers right on the waterfront and on the other side of the highway as well but that's not exactly going to look very good because the highway is then going to be kind of surrounded by buildings. I know that that's exactly what I praised for the railway a couple of seconds ago, but for the highway, I don't think it's going to look that great. So I wanted to have something short, maybe even shorter than the highway, but, but probably not. This, these buildings are slightly taller anyway. And uh, then some skyscrapers on the other side of the highway, right? Because that's just going to create this... Uh, like uh, like steps. I'm not really sure how to explain it. I suppose that it has some architectural meaning to it. Maybe, maybe not. But it just felt like uh, something appropriate for this area that uh, you're going to see more layers in this place as well, right? Not just skyscrapers everywhere, but also these uh, slightly short buildings with some plazas next to them on the waterfront. So there is even a bit more variety to all these kinds of places. And besides, we already did in the city a couple of times before just, uh, you know, placing some skyscrapers here and there. And uh, this is just something different, right? So like I said, more variety. Anyway, these kinds of buildings that I chose for this area, I think uh, all of them or maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure right now, but I think uh, I'm using a lot of vanilla buildings. I think the middle one is uh, like a library. I'm not really sure if it's vanilla or not, but, uh, well, whatever. I'm not really sure about any of these, but I think a couple of them are vanilla. Maybe all of them. Uh, you probably know it better than I do. I I usually don't use these kinds of buildings, but uh, some unique buildings from the vanilla game are actually really, really good looking, even if you are doing uh, like detailing projects uh, like these, right? There are a couple of problems with these buildings. Uh, they don't exactly match together. I suppose they are not really intended to be placed uh, this, you know, close together, but uh, nothing we can't really fix. So, for example, with this particular building, the roof was kind of uh, dirty, not so that not so good looking, and most of these buildings are just very white. So, I even used uh, some procedural object uh, asphalt in there, asphalt squares and repainted them uh, to much brighter color, right? Now, we also placed this uh, statue between the buildings. I think this is the Gagarin statue. And uh, I don't really think that this uh, place, uh, you know, needs to have some kind of a monument like that. But uh, it just looks nice, you know. It's not like a monument to to the guy in Aurelia. But maybe it is, you know. Maybe maybe Aurelia is like a... Actually, it, uh, now that I think of it, the statue is aiming directly to the airport. And we did build like a, like a spaceport... 
uh, area in the airport. So I don't know, maybe it has some kind of meaning like that as well. But I just like the statue. It's a, it's a very nice looking one. The spire with um, with uh, with the guy on the top. It's just looking very good. I definitely wanted something something tall here. And uh, also to break up the space and allow me to do something more interesting with the planters. The area, the surface is obviously a bit too big to just leave it completely open. So some planters were necessary even just to bring more colors to the place. Now speaking of colors, it's still just planters on the pavement surface, right? Later I'm going to, I think, change it to gravel. Well, maybe not because it's actually not necessary because of what I'm doing over here. So some time ago I did that intersection area where I experimented and I think successfully used those colored lanes. And I used these uh, asphalt networks because they can be repainted using the network skins mod. And in here I tried just experimenting at first with these kinds of networks but repainted to different colors. But I think that these colors are exactly the same as the ones I've used in that uh, intersection video. I have them stored there as you can see and um, I'm kind of uh, using them, especially the red and the blue, I think. Those I, those I probably got, uh, got really right with, this, uh, with the settings of the colors in the game in general. Now, I thought that I'm just going to use a single color. I first wanted to use blue, but then I decided, why not just try to do multiple colors and do these blends between the colors? Because this is also a very nice like a side effect of the network skins uh, repainting. Because if you have uh, if you have a network and it's made of you know multiple segments and you're gonna repaint a single segment or you know two segments or whatever, then the neighbors are there's going to be this blend between the colors, like a natural occurring blend between the colors. You're not really going to uh, set it up; it's just going to happen there, right? So that's really nice, and it allows you to do these kinds of transitions very quickly and do these kinds of colored surfaces. So I really wanted to do that because it's just nice. I, I definitely remember seeing uh, one of Comrade Intense's uh, builds. I think he built like a, like a plaza with circles and he also used maybe different networks but similar technique. Uh, and uh, he also did these kinds of blended colors and it looked super nice. So uh, when I first experimented with these colors in here, I thought that that's going to fit this place uh, really nicely as well because you know why not we haven't really done that anywhere else in the city apart from really, really those those uh, intersections but we haven't used the transitions there so anyway this is just going to bring uh, some nice color into this area because that's pretty much all it's uh, intended for we have the black highways going through the area we have the pavement kind of hard dirty looking pavement and I'm also doing these kinds of uh, surfaces between the roads of the highway so that they are very dirty, kind of industrial looking with some parking lots for trucks or some you know, abandoned stuff, some garbage here and there. And then all of a sudden there is this waterfront plaza with all the colorful surfaces and all the just shiny buildings, you know, the museums or galleries or concert halls or something like that, all in one place in uh, in the jungle that is surrounding it, you know, the concrete jungle and the asphalt jungle for for the super interchange. So I thought that was really appropriate and that's uh, definitely something that the city needs in general and this place needs it as well. It's a, it's a nice, nice touch to the interchange, the interchange area. Now speaking of the interchange, uh, like I like I said, we are going to polish the edges of it. So that's what I that's what I was doing right there. I was just doing some retaining walls on the sides of some uh, some exits, some streets, and uh, just doing all kinds of detailings, filling all these little corners between the roads. And just like I said, also with uh, those layers of buildings, I decided to use this particular skyscraper in here because it has like a triangular base somewhat, which uh, fits perfectly because there is this wedge shape formed by the highway and the railway over here. And now we're just going to match uh, some kind of surface infrastructure to the buildings, to the already existing buildings, and it's going to create some blocks that we will have to fill. So this is going to be mostly something that we have seen, for example, in the suburb area quite a lot, and it's kind of necessary. I think that in this video I am showing uh, a bit more than it's necessary, I suppose, but uh, I am skipping through a lot of this uh, just uh, you know, generic building positioning in, in here because you're going to see that in the cinematics and uh, just like I said many times before, with this kind of block filling 
it's the quantity that counts, obviously, because uh, just the sheer volume of the buildings in the area is going to make it look good. But any individual building is not really that super interesting or individual blocks in here. The skyscrapers, yeah, sure, especially the ones that really fit the shapes of uh, or created by the roads and the railways. Those are those are kind of interesting, but the rest of the blocks, they are just here for filling up the place. So some more detailing here under the highway. I mostly just used pavement with the decals, all kinds of stains and everything. And this particular place behind this uh, museum, I think, I think this is the Museum of Modern Arts. I'm not exactly sure. And that is a vanilla building, isn't it? Uh, I think it is. I don't know. I really don't remember. I know that I did download some kind of museums like that from the workshop. I think I've already used them before in the city. I'm, I'm not really sure. Like I said, you probably know more about this than I do. Now, also, you could have seen that I used uh, one more instance. I, I can't really promise that it's the last one, but I have used one more instance of that uh, round building right inside of this loop because, well, it's a loop. It's round. You know, what else am I supposed to put inside of it. And we already have these buildings on the opposite side of this interchange. So in a way, it kind of, you know, if I'm going to recycle these buildings, I might as well just recycle them in exactly the same purposes or positions, right? Because uh, it might make sense that when they were building this uh, super interchange, they also, I don't know, gave permission or Maybe it was already part of the interchange project as well, these buildings. So who knows? It, it probably makes sense. Like, like I said, if I'm going to recycle these buildings, might as well just recycle them uh, exactly where they, were, where, where they were positioned the first time. Now, some detailing uh, in this uh, plaza, because plazas are usually a bit difficult at first, because they're just open spaces, right? You need to fill them with something. And uh, the easiest way to, to do this is using benches and streetlights, because those are not really all that big. They aren't going to take up that much space, but they're just going to put something in there and it's going to be noticeable. It's going to uh, definitely bring some more life to the area. But what is going to bring the most life into this area are obviously people moving, people, uh, pedestrians. So what I'm doing here is uh, something very similar to what I've been doing ev everywhere, obviously, but uh, also something similar to what you could have seen in that uh, previous video, the tutorial that I did on the railway stations or public transport stations, because I'm just putting these pedestrian paths everywhere using the elevated uh, elevated versions of the vanilla pedestrian path. And uh, when I'm done with the geometry, I'm just going to match the heights to the surface and turn them into the invisible paths. And people are going to use them quite a lot. Not exactly right now. They're not going to use them that much because there are not that many places for people to go through the plaza, right? On this other side, because it's mostly empty. But uh, I already I already built for the next episode, so I already know what's going to be there. And the plaza suddenly received a lot of pedestrian traffic because now they have uh, like a big motivation to walk through the area. Because if you think about it, or, well, maybe you can't really see it in here, but the plaza now became a very important connection between different uh, parts of this district, right? Because this entire area, yeah, sure, it's probably not the most walkable place in the entire city, uh, unlike other parts, you know, the pedestrian highways and whatnot, because it's just so high density. But uh, that plaza definitely made it possible for people to just uh, walk between uh, different places of the city if they don't want to use uh, some of the some of the sidewalks on roads, right? There's obviously going to be a lot of public infrastructure in this area. Obviously, the trains we have done the, the railway, but the train is not really like a like local uh, local service. It's uh, it's mostly going to have the stations further apart. But we are building these kinds of tracks. I'm just preparing this infrastructure really for uh, for next episode because I wasn't really sure where I'm going to end this one. So I was always uh, I was all already thinking that I'm just going to start expanding this place some more. But then I decided that uh, we already probably built a lot. And uh, for the next episode, we are going to return to that uh, tram track or a light rail. I'm not exactly sure. Which line is that? That's the line that goes to the airport eventually, I think. Yeah, so those are the trams. Even though in this tunnel that I built, they still share tracks with the light rail. 
Anyway, this is the before and after shot. It might look slightly, slightly weird at first, because for some reason, these past couple of episodes, I was not able to do the exact same positions for the camera, for these before and after comparisons. I don't know why, uh, for some reason, the, the camera just moves into a slightly different position. So in editing, I have to just match uh, match the, the shots, but uh, I can never really get that right, right? So it's going to be a bit fuzzy on that uh, transition. Nothing I can really uh, do about it. Anyway, uh, this is the this is the finished thing, and look at that. The interchange from episode one, almost three years ago when we, when we did this. Uh, is it three? Yeah, I think it is, isn't it? Then uh, it's finally done. It's finally done after all this time. Look at that. There is there is absolutely nothing unfinished in this particular shot. Everything is super high density. All these all these roads are working. Even the trains are going on the railways. This is a very very satisfying shot. This was a very satisfying view when I when I finally completed this area. And uh, we are obviously going to keep adding stuff uh, on the on the other side of this canal. So this place is just going to be one big high density mess of buildings and infrastructure and everything it's it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be absolutely amazing and like i said for the surfaces here for the colored surfaces they definitely bring a lot uh, needed color into this entire area even though these buildings are kind of well if you look at it from this view they're not really colorful they're just uh, white black gray maybe some blue here and there for the windows but uh, that's that's really almost it just a couple of colors here and there kind of uh, sticking through the the jungle of the spires of the skyscrapers but uh, the plaza itself that's definitely standing out quite a lot i was also trying now that i look at this shot i was also trying to maybe improve some of the intersections uh, or just connections highway connections on the super interchange with the intersection marking tools and maybe the node controller and stuff but uh, i did it on just the surfaces really surface exits and uh, then I kind of got bored because I really don't want to revisit these uh, these old projects all that much because it's kind of like a one-way ticket to just, uh, you know, deciding to revisit everything in uh, the city. And that would just take uh, way too long time and I'm not really prepared doing that. I also did, now that I look at it, some more intersection marking tools. Maybe you could have spotted those, uh, those uh, connections between the pedestrian paths and the main avenue. Anyway, guys, that is going to be all for today's episode. Thank you for watching it. If you liked it, then as always, you can put a thumbs up under the video. You can subscribe to the channel if you're new here and leave maybe some comment. Also, big thanks to all the channel supporters who decided to become channel members. Thank you guys for watching again. Take care and goodbye.